Hi, this is John uh, with a, an extended version of Light of the Scripture, uh, presenting the Word of God to you to protect you against the evil mindset of this world. And one of the evil mindsets of this world uh, that uh, we have been run into uh, recently is an old one. It's an old uh, lie of the enemy. And uh, he tries to deceive us and uh, lead us into things that is not the truth. And uh, throughout history, Satan has tried uh, tr to promote the fact that Jesus Christ is not God. And uh, we notice that there are many religions today that uh, believe that. Uh, give you a couple of examples. Uh, the Muslim religion uh, has um, a great deal to say about Jesus, but it doesn't present the correct Jesus doesn't present him crucified and conquering over uh, death itself. And, uh, not you know, uh, they don't, they see him as being a very, very important, uh, possibly the chief of the prophets, but they do not see him as being uh, God in the flesh. And uh, that's, uh, that's an important distinction between uh, Islam and Christianity. And uh, there are other organizations, um, like the Jehovah Witnesses, that believes something very similar. They don't believe that Jesus actually died on the cross. Uh, they uh, deny, in some cases, that there even was a cross. They might just refer to it as being a stake of wood that he was put upon. And uh, he. Uh, they might say that he swooned there. Uh, may have looked like he passed out or something. But uh, that he did not die. But the fact is, he did die. He suffered and died. And took on the sins of mankind upon that cross. And it was because that he was God in the flesh. Uh, that he was able to come back to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, if, you, if you'd like to find out more details about that. Then I encourage you to read any of the Gospels of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. They go into great detail about that. And uh, they give you lots of wonderful insight. fact is that uh, much of the other Bible will give you a great deal of insight as well. But what we want to look at today is um, the claim uh, that Jesus made. And uh, uh, it's um, one thing about Jesus you got to remember is um, how you view him really um, uh, tells us about uh, us ourselves. Uh, because uh, if we don't view Jesus correctly, uh, then our faith will not be correct. And we're saved by faith, so that's a very important thing. And uh, we've got to look at Jesus in primarily one of three ways. Uh, the first one would be that uh, that uh, he is a liar. And, you know, that's the way that the Pharisees believed. They believed that when he said that he was from God and that he was equal to God, that he was a liar and he was a blasphemer. And they put him to death uh, because of those words that he spoke. And uh, so they felt he was a liar. Uh, many people, um, uh, other people, including family members at times, thought that uh, he was uh, insane or he was out of his mind. And he was saying these things and, and sometimes doing these miracles uh, because of his insanity. And uh, But uh, I tend to fall into the third camp. And the third camp is that Jesus was just exactly what he said he was. And that he was not a liar. He was not a uh, person that was insane. But he was truthful. And uh, he had a clear mind. And that he truly was God walking in the flesh. So we're going to look at some scripture to back this up. We don't want to just uh, bring our opinions to you. We want to present uh, the Word of God. And it's uh, in the Word of God, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit, that we are set free. So let's look first at John 1, uh, 14. And by the way, if you'd like to have an access to this uh, list of scriptures I'm going to read, I'm not going to read the whole list, uh, but uh, there's 100 scriptures that talk about uh, Jesus being God. And uh, you can access this by going to Bible, uh, Open Bible, uh, openbible.info, and uh, not .com, but .info. And uh, you can, it's, it's a search engine, and you can put in 
the question that I ask is, what does the Bible say about Jesus is God, or, or Jesus being God? And uh, this is the list that it brought up. And uh, there's uh, thousands of people that have voted on these uh, particular scriptures. And uh, like this first scripture, there's been 3,320 people that have voted that this is a helpful answer. John 1, uh, 14 says, And the Word became flesh, this is talking about Jesus coming into the earth, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So uh, the glory of God was in Jesus uh, when he came here, and uh, he was full of grace and truth. And of course, we're saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, uh, we access that grace by faith, and uh, when he said, he said that he's full of truth, so that basically everything that he uh, ever said was truthful. He told no lies, and he was without sin. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6, which, is, which was a prophecy about Jesus, and this was repeated in the book of Luke, um, actually told about... Uh, Jesus, the hundreds of years before he was born, because the, the plan of God was all set up um, much, much farther than uh, uh, the time of Jesus' birth. And it said, For unto us is born, uh, to us is a son, a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So this child uh, also can be called Everlasting Father. We think of God the Father as being the Father. But the fact is that when there's only one God, and God uh, manifests himself in, th in three people, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, here um, it says that he is Jesus Christ coming to this earth was the everlasting Father and was mighty God. So that's pretty, pretty strong evidence, I think. Uh, next is uh, John 1.1. 1, 1, and it says, In the beginning was the Word. And Jesus was referred to as the Logos, or the living Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was God. So when G Jesus Christ came to this earth, uh, even though, um, you know, he was the the Son of God, uh, he was God himself. And uh, so here, uh, John, in, the, in, in the, the Gospel of John, uh, tells us in the first verse that Jesus was God. Uh, next verse we're going to look at is John eight fifty eight, And uh, these are the words of Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was I was I am. Now there's a couple of uh, significant things about this. When Abraham was born, I'm thinking close to two thousand years prior to Jesus. So uh, he is uh, very very uh, you know ancient in the uh, the biblical genealogy. He wasn't uh, I don't think too far removed from Noah. And um, you see here that uh, the entire Hebrew race uh, came uh, from Abraham. He was uh, blessed by God uh, to have many, many descendants, and of which Jesus was one of them. And um, it says here, before Abraham I was. So uh, here Jesus is saying, I've been, I was around before Abraham ever came to this earth. Now, why can he make that claim? He makes that claim because uh, he, being God, was part of the creation of the earth and uh, everything that's in it. And uh, here he says that, uh, I say to you, before Abraham was I am. And I am, of course, is that great name uh, that uh, when Moses went up on Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments and he spoke to God directly, uh, well, I guess he just got a glimpse of God. Because God's uh, presence would have consumed him if he'd gotten the you know a full vision of uh, seeing God. Uh, Moses asked him, "What shall uh, we? Uh, what shall I tell the people that your name is?" 
And God responded to him, I am that I am. And a very, very accurate name because that, you know, that's God describing himself. He is the creator of all things. And uh, here Jesus is uh, being very clear, saying that he was around before Abraham came to this earth. And uh, because he was even part of the creation, he was uh, in the forming of the earth and the forming of the galaxies, forming of the planets, forming of the stars. Uh, he was right there in the midst of it. And uh, you look at the creation account that is in uh, the uh, book of uh, Genesis, and he is uh, right there as well. And uh, the fact is, the Bible actually uh, says we there, uh, talking about the creation. That's because Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit were all involved in creating the earth and everything that's in it. And uh, so he was there before Abraham, and uh, he uses that same name that God the Father uses, I am. John 10, 30 uh, states, uh, very, very simply, these are the words of Jesus, uh, that I am the Father are one. So, I and the Father are one. So, whenever you see Jesus, you have seen Father God. Now, it's in a, force, a form that will not... Uh, I'm going to have to plug in a, a charger here so I have enough battery to keep going. Um, it's in a form that uh, we can... Uh, comprehend in a form that would not uh, consume us because if we saw God in all of his glory or seeing Jesus in all of his glory uh, it would destroy us in fact is we will have a brand new body in the resurrection and we will be able to stand face to face with God and with Jesus uh, but um, John twenty twenty eight said uh, uh, this is Thomas talking to, to uh, Jesus and uh, it says, uh, and Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. So even Thomas, the, the, one of his disciples, recognized that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. First um, Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 uh, says, yet for us there is none, uh, there is, excuse me, yet for us there is one God. So there's only one God. Uh, the Father, to whom all things exist, uh, from whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus, through him all things uh, all things were through and through exist. So here we see that um, Paul is actually saying that there is but one God, and when we see God the Father, and we see Jesus Christ the Son, uh, they are the same God. They're different manifestations. Uh, they, they look a little bit different whenever they uh, have come into contact with mankind, but it's the same God. And uh, Colossians 2.9 uh, says, For in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily. It's talking about Jesus. And let me explain what that means there. It said the whole fullness of the deity so uh, we see that, you know, we talked about the deity being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But in, when we see Jesus Christ, uh, it says that there in the body of Jesus Christ, all of the deity is, uh, every manifestation of uh, God is, is there in, in its fullness. And uh, he is, uh, Jesus Christ was 100% God plus 100% man. When he walked this earth, I know that's that boggles the imagination, but that is true, and the Bible holds up to that. And um, Hebrews um, one three says he is the radiance of the glory of God and the impact imprint of His nature, and He holds up the universe by the word of His power. You ever think the word of God is powerful? Well, it is so powerful that the universe is held together by it. And after making purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. So Jesus died on the cross and uh, gave up his physical life here. Um, and uh, then he came back to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Then he appeared 
uh, in his resurrected body, uh, the Bible tells us, uh, Paul tells us that he appeared before more than 500 people. And then after that, he ascended into heaven. And then he uh, sat down at the right hand of uh, the majesty on high. So he is in heaven right now. And uh, he is coming back to the earth, by the way. So you want to be prepared for when he gets ready to do that. The uh, Bible tells us that he's going to do that. And it could happen soon. And um, John fourteen six says, And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's talking to Nicodemus, a member of the Sanhedrin, who met with him at night. He didn't want the rest of his uh, buddies to know or his co-workers to know, uh, that he was coming to seek Jesus. But but uh, Nicodemus came to become a believer. And uh, he uh, actually um, was coming to uh, the source of life. And he told him flat out that uh, uh, he was, uh, there was, um, that no man comes to the Father except through him. And uh, we want to accept Jesus as he is. And if we want to have salvation, we have to go through Jesus to get to God. There's only That's the only way that we can get there. We can try through other means, but uh, there's made-up ways that man tried to come up with, but they don't work. And uh, they are often uh, uh, deception tools of the enemy. Uh, Isaiah 7.14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive... And bear a son, and his name uh, shall shall call his name Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel was a na- a title that was given to Jesus. His name was Jesus of Nazareth, but uh, he had many titles. And that name Emmanuel uh, is actually Hebrew for God is with us. So God came down to earth in the form of Jesus Christ to be with mankind and to redeem and save mankind. John 5, 18 says, This is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not breaking the Sabbath, uh, but he was uh, even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. And uh, they felt that uh, if you claim to be God and you weren't God, then you were blaspheming God. Actually, that that is true. If a person does claim to be God and they're not God, then they do blaspheme God. And uh, they felt that he was a blasphemer. He was uh, committing kind of the ultimate sin. But he was actually being very, very accurate about himself as to who he was. And they did not accept that. John 3, 16. Everybody's heard this verse. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only be- only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So uh, he is referred to as the son of God, but um, uh, it's not the same type of a relationship. i got to remember, Jesus was not a created being. He is the creator himself. And uh, so... He, was, he just came down from heaven in the form of Jesus Christ. And uh, he is, uh, while he lived on this earth as a human being, he remained subservient uh, to God the Father. And everything, they were in total coordination because uh, they were just one God. Uh, but um, everything that Jesus spoke, everything that he did, uh, was uh, in coordination with God the Father. And uh, so, um, but that didn't keep him from being God. The fact is, he was God. And Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, the same God before mankind or the earth was ever created. Um, you know, he's, he's that same God. You see the God of power. Uh, that did those wonderful things in uh, the Old Testament, uh, who allowed uh, many of the prophets to perform incredible miracles. Um, He's that same God, and um, he's the same God that raised people from the dead here on this planet. 
uh, uh, during his, the time of Jesus' uh, earthly body, where he was here on the, with his earthly body. And then he uh, provided his salvation. And he conquered death, he conquered Satan, and uh, he conquered the grave uh, whenever he resurrected from the dead. Titus 2.13 says, Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God, uh, Jesus Christ. And let's finally look at the book of Revelation. Revelation, the first chapter and the first verse of it. And it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the things that must take place, he has made it known by sending uh, his angel to the servant John. I don't think that one was real helpful in getting the point across there. Uh, we'll go on down here to John fifteen twenty six, But it says, um, oh no, let's go to the next one. Let's go to John 14, 9. And it says, And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, uh, and you still do not know me, Philip? Philip, of course, was one of the twelve disciples. And uh, he... You know, Philip, I won't say that he was slow, but maybe he had a little difficulty in uh, obtaining the spiritual uh, perception that some of the other disciples got a little bit quicker. And he says, uh, Jesus goes on to say to Philip, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? He didn't realize that God the Father was right there in front of him. And... Uh, so, do you believe that Jesus Christ is God? Um, now, I want to encourage you, uh, if you're part of a religious body, a religious group, that does not teach that Jesus Christ is God, uh, then I want to encourage you to do two things. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is to find a Bible, and a common Bible, that has not uh, been twisted not been rewritten by uh, the organization that you're in. If you're, um, you know, looking at the Quran, the Quran is not the Bible, and it is an incorrect uh, uh, story of Jesus. And uh, same way with uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Bible you have has been retranslated by them, and uh, is not uh, correct and not true to the true Word of God. And uh, find yourself a safe Bible. Find yourself a... Uh, now, it doesn't matter the translation. It can be uh, NIV, uh, New International Version, ESV. I was reading from the ESV version. That's one translation that I really enjoy. Uh, also, the King James is fine. And, uh, but, um, and uh, also, the uh, New King James is fine. But uh, go ahead and find yourself a good translation of the Bible. And then study what it has to say about Jesus. Then after you study it and you realize that uh, your church or you know organization that you're involved in um, is not teaching you the truth about Jesus Christ, find one that does. And uh, you do not want to be led astray. Satan has led millions of people astray, and it has affected uh, many of their salvation. Now, not all groups have uh, the correct view of Jesus, uh, but the way that they view Jesus is not so extreme that it will end up affecting their salvation. And I have a couple of groups that come to mind on that. Uh, one is um, uh, the Mormons, uh, the Latter-day Saints. Uh, they do not have the correct view of Jesus, but uh, they um, uh, typically still believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior for mankind. And um, that's uh, if we uh, believe on him and we receive him, then we're still saved, whether you're Mormon or if you're a Protestant or a uh, member of any other Christian group. And uh, another group uh, that uh, gets some of the particulars about uh, who Jesus is uh, wrong somewhat uh, is uh, uh, the Catholics. And the Catholics tend to uh, take a little bit of the power away from Jesus. They do that by putting extra emphasis upon Mary and upon other saints. And um, 
you know, a true Christian should come uh, directly to God or directly to Jesus. And um, saints were wonderful, wonderful people. Sometimes very blessed people and sometimes people that God had given the ability to do miracles. But uh, they're not to be worshipped. And it doesn't give us benefit to pray to the saints. Uh, we can pray directly to Jesus. We can go boldly before the throne of grace ourselves. The Bible refers to Christians as being a priesthood of believers. So we don't have to have intercession from the saints or the Pope. Uh, we can uh, uh, go directly. And uh, it is the way that God prefers. If you want to hold saints in reverence, that is a fine thing to do because many of them were uh, just wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, if, um, but um, just be careful not to, you know, get the object of your worship off to the side somewhere instead of worshiping uh, the true Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. And uh, so if you're a Mormon, uh, they've got some other beliefs that are off a little bit. They believe that uh, Jesus was a created being, and he wasn't a created being. The fact is, he is a, the creator being, and uh, he is the only creator being, uh, being that he is God, and that God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and him uh, referred to as God the Son. He also called himself the uh, Son of Man because he had an earthly body, uh, but um, uh, they're all the same, and uh, so he is a creator. So don't think ever think of Jesus as being a created being or that God the Father was a created being because they were not. There was no one that was uh, ever greater than them. And we do never want to diminish uh, the divinity, the power of Jesus Christ. This is John with Light of the Scripture filling you in on the true nature of Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I pray that if you... Uh, don't know him as Savior and Lord if you've not uh, uh, turned your life over to him, if you've not repented of your sins. Jesus, uh, you know, he paid the price on the cross for our sins, and we can repent of our sin, and then we can come to him, and we can ask him to come into our heart and into our life. And even though he is that powerful, he has the ability to do just exactly that and to transform us from the inside out when we receive him as Savior and Lord. So I pray that you make a decision to receive him today so that your sins can be forgiven and that you can be cleansed from every bad thing that you've ever done and so that you can be prepared for eternal life. And uh, so receive Jesus, the true Jesus that's revealed to us by the scriptures. This is John with Light of the Scripture encouraging you to get deep into the Word of God and to let the Word of God get deep into you.